Welcome back, bookworms. This is Mrs. K. I'm glad you could join me. Have you ever wondered what is in your blood and what it does? Me too. It's very fascinating and our bodies need it. In this nonfiction book, we will learn what is in our blood and what the parts do. Let's enjoy the magic of reading as I read A Drop of Blood, written by Paul Showers and illustrated by Edward Miller, and find out more about this important part of our bodies, blood. Oh my. Uh-oh, looks like his friend has a cut or something. Oh, there's blood in your arms and legs. There's blood in your fingers and toes. And once in a while, when a game gets too rough, you'll find that there's blood in your nose. There is blood everywhere inside your body. When you cut yourself, you make a hole in your skin. Blood leaks out through the hole. If the cut is small, it soon stops bleeding. You don't have to cut yourself or bump yourself to find out where the blood is. You can see where it is. You can look at your blood with a flashlight. Yes, a flashlight, oh my. Go into the bathroom tonight and shut the door. Turn on the flashlight in the dark. Hold your fingers over the light. What color are they? Look in the mirror in the dark. Hold the flashlight behind your ear. What color is your ear? Shine the flashlight in your mouth. What color are your cheeks? The blood in your fingers and your ear and your cheeks makes them look red. Blood is red because it is full of tiny red cells that float in a watery fluid called plasma. The red cells are very tiny. There are hundreds and thousands and millions of them in a single drop of blood. Red cells are too small to see with your eye. You have to look at them under a microscope. Then the red cells look like this over here, round and flat, thin in the middle, thick around the edge, something like tiny donuts without any holes. The blood is always moving inside your body. Your heart pumps it and keeps it moving. It moves through little tubes, your blood vessels. It moves out to the tips of your fingers. It moves up to your head and down to your toes. The red cells in your blood carry oxygen. Oxygen is part of the air you breathe. You cannot see oxygen, but you cannot live without it. Your body has to have oxygen every minute. You breathe oxygen into your lungs. The red cells in your blood take the oxygen from your lungs. Red cells carry the oxygen to every part of your body. They carry oxygen to your muscles, to your bones, your brain, your stomach and intestines, your heart. So this is a cross section of a lung. You kind of see where the oxygen and the blood vessels are. Your body needs food as well as oxygen. When you eat, the food goes down to your stomach and your intestines. There, food is changed into a fluid. The fluid moves from your intestines into your blood. You cannot see the food anymore, even under a microscope, but it is in your blood. Your blood takes the food and oxygen to every part of your body. It takes food to your bones to make them grow, to your muscles to make them strong, and to your fingers and your toes, even to your brain. So here's a cross section of the small intestine. And you can see the small intestine. These are fluid molecules and there's your blood vessels. Really cool stuff, huh?
<gasps> oh, wow. There are white cells in your blood too. They are bigger than red cells. Your blood has fewer white cells than red cells, but there are thousands of white cells in one drop of blood. White cells protect you against disease germs. A white cell wraps itself around a germ and eats it up. Then the germ cannot harm you. So look at this over here, guys. White blood cells under a microscope. Look at them. They look like little fluff balls. And you can kind of see how it surrounds it and eats it up. Some things in your blood are smaller than the white cells, even smaller than the red cells. They have no color. They are flat and round like little plates. They're called platelets. When you cut your skin, blood runs out. Platelets gather around the cut. They form a plug that helps stop the bleeding. Oh my, and you can see the platelets right there, guys. Isn't that cool? Next, the blood begins to clot. Tiny threads called fibrin form in the plasma. The fibrin threads make a net across the cut. Red cells and white cells are caught in the net. Soon the net becomes thick with red and white cells. A clot is formed. The blood cannot flow through the clot. The bleeding stops. The clot hardens and becomes a scab. Later, new skin will grow under the scab and close the cut. So look here, you can see the platelets. Here's the fibrin. Look at that, guys. Isn't that cool? So one, platelets pour in through the blood vessels to plug up the cut. Two, fibrin net starts to form. You can see that there. And then a scab forms. Pretty cool, huh? Now look over here. It says two pints equals one quart. And that's really important. Little people do not need much blood. Kathy is one years old. She weighs 24 pounds. She has about one and a half pints of blood in her body. That's less than a quart. Big people need more blood. Russell, this is Russell, is 11 years old. He weighs 88 pounds. He has about five and a half pints of blood in his body. That is a little less than three quarts. An adult who is six feet tall and weighs 180 pounds has about 11 pints of blood. 11 pints are the same as five and a half quarts. Wow. Red cells do not last forever. They wear out. White cells and platelets wear out too. But your body makes new red and white cells and new platelets every day. When you cut yourself, you lose some blood. You lose red cells and white cells. You lose platelets. But that doesn't matter. Your body has plenty of new ones to take their place. It keeps making new ones all the time. Sometimes I cut my finger. Sometimes I scrape my knee. Sometimes a drop or two of blood comes dripping out of me. That means I lose some platelets, some white cells and some red. I lose them by the millions in every drop I shed. But I don't get excited about my bleeding skin for all the blood that oozes out. There's plenty more that's in. Now in this book, they also have some fun facts that you can read if you find this book and check it out from the library or buy your own copy. It's very interesting. enjoyed this story, please check it out at your local library or buy a copy from your favorite bookstore.